Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on a new video. I really appreciate the support. If you're new here, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I make a new upload. That's gonna be roughly two, three times a week depending on what works like for me, but I'm working on batch filming for you guys on the weekend so that I can have regular uploads in the week. But bear with me, it's a crazy time. <laughs> so I thought I'd do a video today about my collection within the Mugler house. Now, as most of you will know, Mugler was bought out by L'Oreal, so the formulations have been reformulated. This is something that kind of passed me by. The buyout happened before I got kind of really into collecting fragrances. So any fragrances that I talk about now will most likely have been manufactured post L'Oreal buyout. So please just put this out as a disclaimer now. I don't know about the projection beforehand and I can't comment on that, I'm sorry. But I hope this gives you a good insight into my Mugler collection, some of its samples, some of its full bottles, what I really love from the house and what I would recommend the most. So why don't we start out with the fragrance that kind of made it all happen for Mugler, which was Angel. Now this was released before I was born. You can see I've just got a little sample of it. I've been aware of this fragrance for about three or four years now and I like it. I'll talk you through the notes and my experience with it, but this is nothing short of iconic. If you know it, you know it very well. And if you don't know it, where have you been living? <laughs> it's been around for years. The original bottle, obviously this as a sample, the original bottle, uh, it's shaped like a star. It's kind of very well known. You will have seen adverts for it. But this is one of the original Gourmand fragrances. Now, lots of you might be viewing this and thinking, eh? Angel? Gourmand? Well, yeah, I mean, it is. It's a patchouli-based fragrance. It's very heavy. Um, this is not for the faint of heart, but this has chocolate notes in it. At first, I get a very earthy patchouli and not much more, but as it dries down, the, the chocolate, it's, it's a kind of bitter chocolate. It's a little bit more comparable possibly to cocoa than chocolate, but I think the, the notes list it as chocolate. They come out and it brings out a slight warmth in the fragrance. It's a very... Oh, I was, I was going to say pleasant. I'm not sure if Angel is a very good description or pleasant is a very good description for Angel. It's not so much pleasant as it is pleasing, if that makes sense. I, I like the smell of it. But it is kind of earthy. It is quite grassy. It really, I think the deciding factor on whether or not you would like Angel is whether or not you're a patchouli fan. If you're someone that can tolerate patchouli in... Flower Bomb, Le Vie Belle, these other fragrances that have very, very sweet elements to them to kind of balance out the earthiness, then perhaps Alien, uh, sorry, Angel by Mugler is not for you. Uh, it's very earthy, very kind of bitter, but it's, it's lovely. It's a very nice fragrance. It's a fragrance where the sillage is really what counts. I wouldn't judge it based on what it smells like off your skin up close because it can be kind of a little bit acrid at times. I know that probably sounds quite dramatic, but it can. But the sillage, meaning the kind of wafts that come off you when people walk past you, I think this is where, where that shines. That being said, the Angel line, uh, for me at least, has other superstars that would stop me from buying a full bottle of Angel. I don't really see a gap for Angel in my collection because the fragrance that stole my heart was Angel Muse. Now, Angel Muse is a flanker of the original Angel. I've got a little teeny tiny bottle, and as you'll see, the Angel Star is on the front here. This bottle is 25 milliliters. I've used and abused it since I bought it maybe six, eight months ago. It's a really beautiful kind of take on Angel. So what this differs, or what this has that differs from the original Angel, is it has a hazelnut note uh, that almost sweetens it. Now I wouldn't have thought hazelnut would sweeten anything, but I think nuttiness can bring a slight, a very subtle natural sweetness to fragrance. And that's what I'm smelling here. Now, it's still got the very recognizable Angel DNA of the, the earthy patchouli, but it is sweeter. 
and it's slightly nutty. Uh, now, a bit of a shame for me with this, and this is just, this is a personal thing, it won't affect you guys. You may well know if you've watched other videos of mine, I contracted COVID a few months ago, you know, I'm, I'm fine now, I got over it by the grace of God, but it did affect my sense of smell. I couldn't smell anything for about two months, which was a tragedy for me because I love fragrance. But then again, I was lucky to just be safe and well. So when I say it was a tragedy, I'm being flippant. It really was the most minor of consequences for me compared to what other people have faced. But what, I'm, what I mean when I say that is it, it affected my nose. I couldn't smell anything at first. And then when it started to come back, my sense of smell was different lots of things were the same but i just noticed that fragrances that i knew really well from the past had changed and angel muse is one of those my nose now it's getting better it won't always be this way but i'm just going through a bit of a weird transition period i'm now about three months post sense of smell loss so hopefully it'll be back in a, another couple of months but this smells now ever so slightly play-doh-y to me and I can guarantee to you, it doesn't smell like Play-Doh at all. It just doesn't. But there's something like olfactory going on here for me. I don't know if it's the hazelnut that I'm picking up that is giving it a slight doughiness. I'm not sure. But the original Angel smells the same to me, but this doesn't. So it's something that's in this, it's not in that, that is giving me a slight strange doughiness. But I know what it smells like really well and I know that what I'm smelling is not the truth. It's trickery going on somewhere in my sensory receptors. This is a beautiful warm but not, it's not cosy, it's warm like slightly spiced patchouli with a little bit of a cocoa note or chocolate notes and some hazelnut in there. If you're into a foodie gourmand but you want something that's a little bit out there and a little bit different try Angel Muse. It's much more kind of crowd pleasing and much more mass appealing than Angel, which I wouldn't recommend anyone blind buy. This was a blind buy for me. It worked out really well. My mum smelt it the day I got it. She bought it the day I got it. I told my friend about it. She bought it a couple of days later as a blind buy and loved it as well. You know, it's, it's a beautiful fragrance. This is the EDP. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, they came out with an EDT and like these houses often do, it wasn't just a different concentration of perfume with EDP being, you know, around 20% and EDT being somewhere around, I think, 15%. What they did was they changed the notes in the EDP versus the EDT. So I bought the EDT thinking it would be a beautiful kind of spring summer version because where the original EDP has patchouli and hazelnuts, the EDT has much less patchouli, if any at all, and they've brought in a passion fruit note and people online were telling me it's so juicy and so kind of sweet and it, it's really, you know, a, it's just a really realistic passion fruit note. So I bought it, I got the big bottle, I was so excited, blind buy, may I add. And I think this is one of the only blind buys that's gone wrong for me. I'll show you the bottle. So this is the bottle. So if you were to get the full bottle of the EDP, it would look like this, but the juice would be this kind of amber, yellowy color. This is slightly more pink. My ring light is making it look a bit orange. It, it's not. It's a pink juice inside. Now, the reason I gave you the intro to the sensory changes that have happened for me with, with Angel Muse is this is exactly the same. There's a note that is common between the two of them, clearly, that just smells so weird to me now. This now, to me, and again, it's only because I've got problems with my sense of smell. I just realised the top of the bottle's leaking. Oh, how unfortunate. This, I don't even want to, oh, why did I spray it on myself? Because I don't like the smell of it. Idiot. This smells... It smells like like sweet, slightly sour Play-Doh to me. I don't know, well, I do know why. It's because of the whole COVID saga, but this is supposedly, and I, I trust people's reviews that it is, a beautiful, sweet take on patchouli. And it is a cult classic for a reason. It must be good. And generally speaking, I like fragrances that other people like. You know, I'm not kind of snobby. 
I'm not hard to please. I have a very wide range in interest in fragrances. But this just smells horrible to me. And I'm not saying that you guys shouldn't test it and, and maybe blind by it because you will have a very different situation hopefully than what I'm having. But it's just kind of funny to me, like, why did I think I should buy an Angel Muse flanker when Angel Muse had changed to me post-Covid? Like, where where did I get that? Why? Why, Ellie? Why? Anyway, I the day that I bought it, I was like, mm, I don't know. And I still don't know. And I've been toying around, like, should I should I sell it? But I don't know whether I should sell it because I have a horrible feeling that I'll sell it. And then in two or three months, my sense of smell will be completely back to normal and I'll want it back again. What do you guys think? What would you do if you were me? What would you do? Would you sell the 100ml bottle and test it again in the future and maybe rebuy? Or would you hang on to it until maybe the spring, retest it and then see? Yeah, it just, it smells, it smells slightly like burning rubber to me now that I think of it. I don't know. It's my nose, it's not the fragrance, but also it's just kind of taking up space in my collection. And I know I'm not going to wear it. The only time I sprayed it is to test it, test it again, and then for this video. And I've had it like a month. So probably not the best buy on my part. Okay, so the next fragrance is one that is very, very well loved in the community. And you will pay a pretty penny trying to get a bottle for now that it's discontinued is Alien Essence Absolute. I don't have the original Alien. I know it very well. I have lots of friends who wear it and have worn it for years. It's a very, very nice fragrance that I may well buy at some point, but I just, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it was necessary for me. However, Alien Essence Absolute was calling my name, but I only learned of its existence after it was discontinued. Why is that always the case? Why? So I bought online uh, from a Depopper who was linked in my last video. I bought a sample. She's great. Uh, she sells decants of you know, some celebrity scents, some designer and lots of niche scents. She's fantastic. Uh, I trust that this is the original formulation, all of that. I bought a sample because I was like, right, I've got to love it. The notes are, you know, it's the amber, it's the jasmine, but it's got some vanilla. It's basically like a slightly wintry version of Alien. It was really calling my name, but for a 60 ml bottle at the minute, you'll pay about £100 if anyone's selling it, if they're selling it at all. And... I just wasn't going to blind buy that. I was like, hmm. And to be honest, I'm glad I didn't blind buy it. I have a dupe of Alien Essence Absolute that I will review for you guys. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. Um, but I I bought the dupe, didn't know what the original smelled like, liked the dupe, but still had it in the back of my mind of like, well, I don't know what the original's like, so I don't know how good the dupe is. Well, the dupe is very similar, but it's a summary version. Again, I'll review it in depth for you and let you know the, the house that it's from. But this is a very beautiful, warm, ambery jasmine. It's it's a warm, amber, slightly vanilla -y version of Alien. If you like Alien, you will probably like this. It's a slightly deeper version. But whilst I think it's beautiful and I'll wear it happily, I must admit, I was surprised by the hype when I smelt it. I expected my head to fall clean off my shoulders, you know, for my skin to be cleared, for my tax bill to be reduced. No, I mean, people had been losing their minds over this fragrance and I was caught up in the hype. I was like, oh my God, I've got to try it. It smells really, it sounds really good. It sounds like it's going to smell great. You know, and these were reviewers that they weren't being sponsored. I trust them. They're just kind of small reviewers like me. They've got no reason to kind of lie and be, you know, shady about it. And it's, not, it's nice. I don't regret buying the sample. I'll use it up. I appreciate it. But it's just not, it's just not wow to me. It's not. And I wish it was. I really wish it was. It has a slight um, similarity, I suppose, to Oud Bouquet for me. I'll show you the bottle in case you're not familiar. It's not, it's not the same as Oud Bouquet and I don't want you guys to go away and think, wow, Ellie's lost her mind because she's saying that Oud Bouquet and Essence Absolute are the same. But it's got a slight, like, it's just, it's just the warmth. It's the wintry warmth that reminds me of it. And I guess why I was slightly unimpressed or just uninspired by Essence Absolute was because I've, I was expecting it to be that kind of go-to warm wintry fragrance. But I already have that. 
I absolutely love Eau de Bouquet. Um, I am a big fan of Angel Muse as well for the winter, aside from the Play-Doh note, which is now happening. But before I had COVID, this was like an autumn winter go-to. I think the box has already been ticked for me. And that's just for me, you know, you guys might not have any winter fragrances and therefore this might absolutely like take the cake for you. But considering it's so hard to get your hands on and if you can get your hands on it, you're going to pay a very pretty penny for a full bottle. My advice would be don't, <laughs> just don't do it. I don't think it's necessarily worth it. I think that the fragrance is beautiful, but it is overhyped just because people went so crazy for it online that now the resale prices of it are reflective of that hype. And unfortunately, people are paying it. And that's their prerogative, it's their money, I don't care. But it just means that the resale price will never really go down for this, I don't believe. It's very nice. My dupe of it is not dissimilar. It's slightly less warm and ambery, but it's a very lovely jasmine vanilla. It's identifiable as a flanker of Alien, in my opinion. I'll give you a full review on it uh, in comparison in the coming you know, days or weeks if it's something you're interested in. But I'd say in general, out of the four that I have in my collection, so we have Essence Absolute, which is an alien flanker. We have the original Angel. Then we have Angel Muse EDP and Angel Muse EDT. We're going to bin this one off. I'll let you guys know if I get, you know, better results from it as my nose returns to normal. But as it stands at the moment, it's a no from me. I don't know whether to resell it. Let me know, guys, what you think. This is not a safe blind buy. It's lovely if you're into bold fragrances and you're not scared of patchouli. If you don't know this already, you will love it. It's very, very nice. This is my absolute favourite. This is a spicy, slightly chocolatey, nutty uh, patchouli fragrance. It's warm but and, and spicy, but it's not, in, it's not offensive. But it's also not safe. It's not safe boring at all. It, it, it's, it feels different to a lot of other offerings on the market, which is something that's important for me now. I never used to care about it when I was younger, but now when I smell a fragrance, it annoys me if it smells like everything else. I'm like, I've already smelt it. It's boring. I don't want to be bored by it. I'm not bored by this. And I look forward to the day that my nose goes back to normal so that I can, you know, enjoy it again. This is not like everything else on the market at all. I'm going to give credit where credit's due. It is different. But I would say you can get the same effect of this by layering Alien, which is very readily available, uh, and a vanilla solar note fragrance. To be honest, it's that's kind of it. Maybe a little bit of an amber solar note in there. There is amber in uh, the original Alien, but probably not as much as in here. And that's kind of it, guys. You know, it's not it's not what it it's not what it was sold as for me. But I'll use it up. I like it. I just don't recommend that you guys go and pay you know, a pretty penny for the bottle. So that is everything for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope I didn't offend anyone <laughs> with my reviews on uh, Essence Absolute and the Angel Muse EDT. There is kind of something going on with my nose which will change my perspective on things compared to you guys. Hopefully you're not going through the same kind of struggle, but I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me, for riding it out for the last few days since I've been uploading. I appreciate it. If you can like, comment, subscribe if you've not already and make sure that you click the notification bell so that YouTube can let you know when I upload because I think otherwise it's kind of hit and miss as to whether you'll be updated on that. So for your own sakes, make sure that you're aware that I've uh, uploaded because I know that it'll be gutting if you miss it. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for your time. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.